everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you for joining us. And I want to thank Jen for uh, hosting this. This is an awesome opportunity for everybody to become a batting expert. Um, so we do have a lot of information to cover and I'm going to go through it relatively quickly, uh, but I think that you will come out of this knowing a heck of a lot more about batting uh, by the end. And uh, as Jen mentioned, please place questions in the chat. I will address them um, at natural breaks in the presentation. Um, and I'm gonna give you a quick outline of how we are going to do the presentation. I do wanna mention that I'm with Hobbs Bonded Fibers. Um, we've been in business since 1953. And we've been making batting for the quilting industry, as well as lots of other products uh, since 1978. So a little more than 43 years. Uh, we do count a lot of professional quilters, professional long armors, show quilters among our customer base. Um, and we are very honored that they choose our batting and we hope that you will too. So for those of you who may not be familiar with our batting, uh, we are most well known for Heirloom Premium 8020, which is a 80-20 cotton blend, um, but we make lots of other products, 14 different batting products, as well as some crafting and home decor products uh, in addition to that. So the goal today is that I want you to really understand fiber. So whether you're using our batting or someone else's, there will be lots of valuable information in this presentation. We're really gonna focus on the fibers, uh, the pros and potential cons of each, which ones we recommend for which types of quilting, which ones we may steer clear of for certain types of quilting. And then we're gonna go into the each, uh, each individual fiber grouping. So that would be polyester, cotton, cotton blends, wool, and silk. And I'm going to be presenting them in roughly uh, least expensive to most expensive, but I do wanna make it really clear that least expensive does not mean cheap. Least expensive doesn't mean lower quality. It just means that that fiber is less expensive to purchase and therefore that sells at a lower price. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's less quality or won't provide great results for you because it absolutely does. And we have some polyesters that can give you the same finish as our wool. So we're gonna talk about each of those and we're going to start with the five questions that we normally ask ask quilters when they are trying to pick a batting. So a lot of times quilters come to visit us at quilt shows and they're looking for help picking a batting for a specific project. The first question we're going to ask is, what is it that you're making? And that may seem really obvious, right? You, you obviously have to know what you're making, but it is very important when you're thinking about the differences in the quilt in terms of who it's for, what kind of finish you want it on it, et cetera. So let's take an example. Let's say that Jan and I are chatting and Jan says, I'm making a bedspread. And I say, okay, great. Is the bedspread for you or for someone else? That starts that line of questioning. And I can tell you that the initial five questions usually turns into 20 or 30 questions. What we're doing each time we ask a question is we're trying to eliminate battings that aren't appropriate and get you to the one or two, maybe even three, that would be the best choice. And again, we're always focused on your goals, what it is you're trying to accomplish with your quilting. And that could be a quilt or it could be clothing, it could be a quilted project, it could be a sewn project where you're gonna put some uh, batting inside for additional strength or structure or maybe warmth, uh, but it applies to everything. So first question, what are you making? Second question is what kind of finish do you want on it? So that is the top surface of the quilt as well as the back of the quilt or for clothing, the inside and the outside because you can get two different effects by double batting. So we're gonna talk a little bit about double batting later on in the lecture, uh, but I wanna point that out now. The other time when it's really important to be thinking about uh, the texture on your quilt is when you are going to pre-wash your fabrics. When you pre-wash fabrics and they've already shrunk and then you put a shrinking batting behind them, the batting when it shrinks will actually pull in on the fabric and make the fabric wrinkle up. So is that the look you want? Maybe it's not. Maybe you want a very smooth surface. Well, there are battings that don't shrink at all. So that could work with pre-washed fabrics or we may advise you not to pre-wash your fabrics so that when you make your project, 
your batting and your fabric shrink together. So we have a few different options there. So the surface of the quilt is very important. It also applies to what type of stitching and piecing are you going to do? Are you gonna have a lot of piecing or are you gonna have a lot of stitching? Um, is it gonna be a lot of open space? Because some battings require that you stitch fairly close together. Others can be stitched further apart. Well, that affects your design, right? So there may be a time when you have a design that requires a lot of open space and or maybe a smooth surface. And there are specific battings that are best for that use case. So that's our second question. Third question is who is the project for? Now, if you're making a, a project for yourself or another quilter, you can pretty much use any batting that we make, right? Because you as a quilter, you know how much time and possibly money is going to get invested into the quilt. And another quilter would also know that. And if I were to say to you, this is the batting I recommend, but once you make your project, you do need to wash it in cold water. Chances are you are going to follow those washing instructions because you don't want to ruin the quilt. But if you give that quilt to someone who is not experienced around quilts, for instance, somebody who you would give a quilt to who would say, thank you for the blanket, right? Anybody ever have one of those instances, right? You may not want to put wool or silk in those quilts. So again, we always want to know who it's for. We also want to be thinking about the use case. So that is our fourth question. What is the use case? So let's go back to the example I gave earlier with Jan. So she says, I'm making a bedspread and it's for a young couple and they want something that has that traditional crinkled look right? Okay, right there, I've learned a lot already. I've already eliminated some battings and I'm heading in the direction of other battings. Now, if she says to me, they're a young married couple, they just got married and they moved into a small apartment. Okay, immediately that tells me a little bit about them. It tells me that they're probably going to use it on their bed. They're probably not going to move it around a lot in the house because the house may or may not have a lot of rooms. And it also tells me that they may or may not have laundry facilities in their home. And that is the fifth question. What is the use or the, the uh, care environment, right? How are they going to take care of the quilt or quilted project? So again, what are you making? What is the finish? Who is it for? What's the use case and how's it going to be cared for? So in this instance, if we were to say, okay, this is her niece and nephew, uh, uh, niece and, and new nephew, and she's giving them a wedding gift, right? And she says, well, you know, they actually, they have to use a laundromat. Well, that tells me that we probably want to steer clear of two things. Number one, we probably want to steer clear of anything that requires delicate washing and anything that needs air drying because in a small apartment, it could be quite challenging to air dry a queen or king size quilt. And if they're using a laundromat where you really cannot know for sure that that washer is going to be washing on delicate or the dryer is gonna be air fluff only and not have a lot of heat, um, then there are certain battings we would tell you to steer clear of. Also, when you are giving a quilt, any time that you're gonna give a quilt, ask as many questions as you can of the recipient. So think about, what their use case is, right? Ask them the same questions I'm asking you. Ask them questions about their preferences. Do they want a lightweight quilt versus a heavy quilt? Do they want a quilt they can use year round? What kind of climate do they live in, right? If somebody lives in a very hot, humid climate and you make a quilt that needs to be air dried, chances are it's gonna take a very long time for that quilt to dry. Not necessarily because of the batting, because we do have battings that dry quickly, but because of the cotton fabric. Since most quilts are made with cotton fabric, the cotton takes a long time to dry. So again, we're always trying to gather as much information because it helps us to narrow down choices. When you have 14 battings <laughs> staring you in the face, it can be a little overwhelming to to know which one to pick. So the goal again, we want to narrow down the choices to two or three that are gonna be the best choice. And then we'll probably ask more questions and usually we can get it right down to one that we feel is really gonna be the best option. Today, I received an email from somebody who was on a lecture of this about a week ago. And she had a question. So here is the use case that, that she and I talked about. She said, I'm going to be making an art quilt, a wall hanging. 
And I would like to make sure that it has some nice definition, but I don't want it really puffy and I want it lightweight, okay? I was able to, with just that information, immediately go to what I would recommend. And in that case, I recommended either Thermor or Silk, which are great for our quilts. If you were to have said, and I'm gonna be doing hand quilting, I might've thrown a few more into the mix that we recommend for hand quilting. So there's always gonna be best use cases for batting, but it's also important to understand that sometimes there's nine reasons to use a batting and one reason not to, right? Depending on how you answer those first five questions. So that is it for the, that first section. If anybody has any questions about that process, uh, please feel free to put them in the chat and Jen, feel free to ask any time um, if we get any questions around that. We're gonna go ahead and jump right into fiber groupings. And the first group we're gonna talk about is polyester. Now by a show of hands and honesty counts here, by a show of hands, how many of you would never use polyester in your quilt? Don't like to quilt with polyester, okay? I will tell you it's usually 70% of my audiences. And here's what I want to say about that. I think part of it comes because maybe people had a really bad experience at one time. Maybe they used polyester many years ago. Maybe they used a really cheap product um, that wasn't well made, that didn't hold up well. Um, but I can tell you that the polyesters we're going to talk about are the finest available on the market. They are made with a very fine high denier polyester. That fine denier polyester is very strong and it has a lot of wonderful attributes. It's also relatively inexpensive, but you can get amazing finishes with it. And we have many professional quilters who make their samples for market and festival, who make their samples for their patterns using the polyester batting. So that should tell you that if somebody is wanting to sell their work and they're willing to put this polyester batting in there, that it is of good quality. So let's talk about the attributes of polyester. So the first attribute is inexpensive. Again, not cheap, just a less expensive fiber. Secondly, it is lightweight. So if you're looking to make a lightweight quilt, it is a good choice. It is especially a good choice if you want a warm quilt that is lightweight because polyester is very insulating. Polyester will actually warm up and hold the heat in. So if you're making a quilt for a cold environment or maybe just for maybe someone who's always cold, uh, but maybe not a cold environment, then polyester could be a really good choice because the polyester will actually hold the heat in. So it can be good for that. Polyester is also quite strong. It is a very strong fiber. We have several different types and I'm gonna show you the thicknesses of those just so you can get a sense for the loft or the thickness or the puffiness of the batting. Um, but they have different lofts so you can get different textures, again, finish on your, on your quilt. Um, and they are also going to enable you to stitch close together or far apart. So that is something to know. And how do you know when a batting is strong? When it gives you a wide stitch width. So if you're looking at a package of batting, I'm gonna hold one of ours up. Always on the bottom of batting. This is not just our company. This is all batting companies. We will give you a recommended stitch width. And when we give you that, that is not a suggestion. <laughs> Please look at it as a requirement if you want your quilts to hold up over time. So how we come up with that is when we are developing a new product, we make what are called wash test samples. We quilt them at different widths, we bind them, we throw them in the washer and the dryer over and over again, and then we do some torture testing on them. What we're looking for is at what point do we notice any structural integrity leaving the batting? In other words, if we're stitching four inches and six inches and the batting looks great, but when we get up to eight inches apart, we start to see maybe a little migration, then that means that we're going to recommend a smaller stitch width. Every batting company does this. This is how we determine the strength of the batting and, and how far apart you can stitch. If we give you a stitch width of four inches and you stitch it every eight, chances are over time that batting is going to migrate. 
So if any of you have an older quilt that you've had for a really long time, it's got some bunches of batting in different places, that is probably because it was stitched at too wide of a stitch width. So important to pay attention to that. Yeah, Jen, go ahead. Okay, so I have a couple of questions that have come through. The first is from Sylvia. Sylvia, I'm not sure if you were directing the question to Red Thread Studio or to Stephanie specifically at Hobbs, but it was, is there a process of elimination chart for choosing correct batting? And so Stephanie, do you guys have one of those? If not- so, uh -huh. Yeah, so this chart here, which I've actually linked in the chat. If you go scroll up to the top of the chat, there's a link to this chart. This has the names of the battings, what they're made of, um, how much loft there is, how much they shrink, how far apart to stitch, et cetera. That is going to be the most helpful. And I think by the end of today's session, you will probably find that you're very easily able to eliminate battings. So pay close attention when I talk about each fiber, if you can take notes. So for instance, if I said to you, if you said to me, you were making a quilt for charity, I am going to tell you today which battings are best for charity quilts because they are battings that we know will hold up no matter how the quilt is washed, right? There are other battings that require cold water delicate cycle washing. You want to stay away from those if you're giving a quilt to a non-quilter because chances are they're going to forget that they need to wash it in cold water or they may just decide, oh, it can't really be that important, right? And then they may wash it in warm water and they may ruin the quilt. So the idea today is that as I share this information with you, ask yourself the five questions we started with and then look at each of the groupings we're gonna talk about. If at any point you ever need help with batting, I also put my email address and my cell phone number in there. And Jen, you are welcome to email that to everybody who attends. You are welcome to reach out to me anytime. You can call my cell number, you can send me an email and I will walk you through the process. It takes a little bit of practice and we do have sample sets of the batting. So the more you get those in practice with them, you will learn which ones you like, which ones maybe you don't like as much, and how they affect the outcome of the quilt because every batting affects the outcome differently and you cannot tell how a batting is gonna perform by looking at it in a package or even feeling it. You've got to actually play with it. So that's why we make the sample sets available um, and Jen is gonna tell you where you can get those I think by the time we get to the end of the presentation. Um, Jen Lynn does sell those. Um, so we can, we can make those available to everybody. Okay, just a, um, some questions coming up about the link. Folks, not many comments have been made. So if you just scroll to the top of the chat, you'll see the link from Stephanie. Also, yesterday I sent the very same chart to you in an email. You can check your inbox from an email from info at redthreadstudio.com. Um, so that's where you'll find the charts. Um, and I just put the link in again. So it's, it's at the in bottom in. of the chat. Great. Um, we have one more question on this section uh -huh. uh, from yeah. Cynthia. I'm a hand quilter. I would like to use polyester, but I have a difficult time sandwiching and basting the layers together because the fabric slips against the batting. What do you suggest? I am going to give you a life-changing batting <laughs> in just a moment. Um, we do have uh, battings that are recommended for hand quilting that are 100% polyester. I'm going to talk about them in just a moment. So just hang tight there. Um, all right, perfect. Okay, hopefully everybody can see the, uh, the chart now that I put it back in there again. I will enter it one more time in case you need it. Um, so let's go back to the attributes of polyester. Inexpensive, lightweight, insulating, strong. It also does not shrink. So remember we talked about pre-shrinking and not pre-shrinking fabrics. If you want to pre-shrink your fabric, and you don't want any wrinkling on the surface of your quilt, your only choice is to use the non-shrinking batting because any batting that shrinks is gonna pull in on your fabric. Alternatively, again, you don't uh, do the pre-washing on your fabrics and you let your batting and your, and your uh, fabric shrink together and you'll have minimal crinkling. But again, that batting is going to shrink and it may shrink at a different rate 
than your fabrics. So the only battings that do not shrink are polyester. They don't shrink at all. Polyester batting is also um, hypoallergenic or anti-allergenic. Uh, it is also antimicrobial and it just holds up like nothing else. It really, really holds up well. So we're gonna take a look at a few different examples. And this first one is for our hand quilter and it is called Thermore, okay? It's T-H-E-R, M-O-R-E. If you're looking at that chart that I put the link up to, it's the fourth from the top. And what you'll notice about this is that it is very thin, okay? It has a low loft or low puff, um, but it is very, very strong, okay? This is a batting that I can pull on and it does not stretch out of shape, okay? Unlike cotton, which easily stretches out of shape if you pull on it. So the thermore batting, it's actually pronounced the more, but it was originally designed for clothing and miniatures. So for clothing, obviously clothing is washed a lot, worn a lot, takes a lot of use and abuse. So that's what this batting was designed for. That tells you it's very strong. What also tells you it's very strong is if you look at the chart and you look at how far apart you can stitch this, you can stitch this up to nine inches apart. Okay, again, that tells you it is a strong batting that will not pull apart easily. So it is wonderful for utility quilts or quilts that will get a lot of use and abuse. Think camping quilt, picnic quilt, quilts used by kids can be great for that. Now it is low loft, which also makes it great for art quilts, especially art quilts with lots of tiny piecing and stitching where you don't want a lot of puff because that can obscure your work. And it's wonderful for hand quilting. Okay, very easy to hand quilt. Now, one of the benefits of this product is that it has a little bit of a tooth on it, right? So when you feel it, there's a little bit of a tooth there. It's not rough. Like, you know, when you think of the microfiber towels, how if your hands are at all a little dry and you run your hand over the microfiber towel, it kind of catches. It's not like that, but it does have enough of a tooth to grab onto your fabric. So we have a, a lot of uh, professional quilters who use this batting anytime they're making minky quilts, minky or cuddle quilts, because that is a poly uh, material that tends to slide around a lot. And this sort of holds it together. The other really great benefit about this is that your minky and cuddle are 100% polyester, okay? And they are not going to shrink. If you put a shrinking batting behind them, like a cotton batting, and that batting shrinks up, it is gonna shrink in the minky and the cuddle. If you've gotten one of those that has a specific design pattern, you may not want that, right? You want that to stay nice and smooth. So it's important to think about that. Anytime you're making something with a fabric, how much does it shrink compared to your batting? So the Thermor again is wonderful for everyday quilts, utility quilts, quilts that are gonna take a lot of use and abuse. It's wonderful for art quilts, for hand quilting, great for wall hangings or anything for your table. If you're making a table runner, a tabletop or placemats or coasters, right? Where you generally want those to be relatively flat because if you set a glass with liquid in it on top of a really puffy piece, chances are it's going to be wobbly and it may tip over and spill. So the Thermor is really good for those kinds of projects. It's also good for things like charity quilts. Now, a lot of people, when I show it to them or they come to our booth and they feel it, they say, but it's so thin and it, you know, it's got some puff to it, but it's relatively thin. How could it really show your work? Trust me, it does. It really emphasizes your stitching. So again, the only way to really know this is to get a piece of this and practice with it, play with it. If you're in doing uh, embroidery in the hoop, this is a wonderful product to use for that. You can stretch it into the hoop, doesn't get stretched all out of shape, and it will give you really nice definition to your stitching. So that is the first of the polyesters. The next two that I'm going to talk about are also on your chart on that in that top section. Yeah, go ahead. A, a general question about poly batting um, is: Will it make um, 
if it's a bed quilt, for example, the person under it's sweaty. In other words, is the poly breathable or is it not breathable? It, it does not breathe the way a natural fiber does, right? It insulates, it holds heat in. So if you're in a hot, humid climate, Florida, for example, or Texas, where, where I am, um, if you are in a hot, humid climate, we don't generally use polyester in the quilts that we want to use year round right? Because if we want to be able to use it year round, we want something that breathes. So whether it's cold or hot, we can still use that quilt. Um, it's great for babies. When you're thinking about bringing a new baby home from the hospital, right? You want to cuddle them up and keep them warm. It could be great for that. But if you have someone who tends to run hot, like I run hot at night, I've got the AC blasting and the fan on. Um, I wouldn't normally put polyester in my quilt for sleeping but I might want it on the couch when I'm cuddling up watching a movie, right? It really, de it depends on the person, but yes, it is a, it is a man-made fiber and it does not breathe the way natural fibers do. Okay. And a clarification on um, putting it in a hoop. Did you mean machine quilting in a hoop or hand quilting in a hoop or both? Either. Right. Yeah, so machine quilting in the hoop, it's great for that. Actually, all of the polyester battings are great for that. When we go to shows and people and the, the uh, machine companies are demoing their embroidery in the hoop or different things that they're doing in the hoop, they always come over and get a bunch of our polyester batting to use for their demos. So it is wonderful for machine quilting in the hoop or embroidery in the hoop, whether you're doing that by machine or by hand. Great. So the next two battings I'm going to show you are going to look very similar. One is called Poly Down, and it is in the heirloom line of products. Okay, that's the, the word up there above our name on the banner behind me. The second one is Tuscany Poly, and it is in the Tuscany line of products. So right before I get to those, I want to explain the difference between the products so that you understand them. We make what are called bats. Okay, a bat is a pre-cut size, right? Looks like this comes in a package. It is not the real big tall rolls like you load on a long arm machine. We also sell those. But when we are making bats, we sell them in two different types. We sell the rolls also in two different types. One line is called heirloom. This is the line we started our business with. And one line is called Tuscany. Okay, and you'll notice they look quite different in the way they're packaged. The heirloom products are rolled up, very tightly compressed into a bag, and it looks kind of like a cinnamon roll on the end, right? Not much air in this bag. There is gonna be some creasing and wrinkling in this batting when you take it out. When you buy the Tuscany products, you'll notice that they are square or rectangular in shape. They are folded rather than rolled, and there's a lot of air in the bag, okay? The reason this is done is because these products were made specifically for quilt shops, independent quilt shops, or people like Jen who have a shop online who sell batting. And we made this line specifically for them. We do not sell the Tuscany products to big box stores or deep discounters. This is what we refer to as our premium line of batting, and it is all hand folded and hand packaged. So we cut it by hand, we fold it by hand, and we package it by hand. It will have little to no wrinkles or creases right out of the package. The difference in the way that they're packaged also helps with a retailer for them to store it or to merchandise it because there's lots of different ways they can put it on the shelf. So when you look at our cotton or our wool or our poly, they are the same product in both lines. The difference is in that finishing. So if you buy them on big rolls, there's no difference, right? So if you buy a roll of heirloom cotton or a roll of Tuscany cotton, it is the exact same product. If you buy a bat of the cotton in either, it is the same product. Again, the difference is in the finishing. How many of you, when you go to, to do a quilt, you realize, oh, I forgot to take my batting out of the bag, right? You take your batting out, you're ready to quilt your top and you realize your batting's all crinkly and wrinkly, right? Okay, I'm gonna give you a quick tip. Number one, you could choose the Tuscany line 
And that should never be a problem because you can just easily lay it out and it's ready to go. Secondly, you can take one of these bottles, right? These are the ones that have the really fine mist to them. And you can lay the batting out, very, very lightly spritz it with water. You're barely getting any water on the batting. You don't want it wet, not even damp. Just lightly mist the batting, throw it in an air fluff dryer for 10 minutes, no heat, 10 minutes and it will fluff the, the wrinkles and creases out of the batting and you can use it right away. Now, there's one batting we make that is fusible. Please do not do it with the fusible batting because the fusing medium is water soluble. If you spray that one with water, it is not going to work correctly. It's not going to stick to your fabric, which is its whole purpose. So let's go back to our polyester. Yep, go ahead. Um, for, for Heirloom and Tuscany, is there a difference between the two lines? In the pricing? Yeah. Yeah, there is a difference. Um, it depends on who's selling it, how much of a difference there is, um, but it's not a big difference. If you're looking at the cotton in both lines, not a real big difference. The only price difference is really to cover the cost for the hand labor. Again, we are hand cutting it, hand folding it, and hand packaging it in our plant. The other products are actually rolled by the machine, right? So there is a little bit of a cost difference just because of the labor involved. Um, but for most products, it's not really significant. So it really comes down to, you know, again, one of the benefits of the Tuscany line for a retailer is that that product can be bought in eaches once they meet our minimum requirements. So when they meet our minimum order, which is frankly quite small, um, they are able to buy one of each type of product that they want to try in the Tuscany line. In the heirloom line, they have to buy a whole case of everything. So for a retailer, it gives them a chance to bring in like, you know, one of everything and try it out and see what sells and then order more of those things. But they don't have to buy a whole case of that product in each size every time they buy it. So that, again, that's a retailer benefit. And I'm saying this primarily for Jen. Um, so she knows that. Um, but, but part of that is if you go to a retailer and they only carry Tuscany or they only carry heirloom, they may have a reason for doing so um, that has nothing to do with you. <laughs> it has more to do with their business. But just know that if they carry any of our products, they can get all of our products, okay? So again, at the end, Jen's gonna talk a little bit about where you can get our batting through her. Um, and again, there are lots of choices um, available. So we have two different polyester battings. The first one we're gonna talk about is in the heirloom line. And what you're gonna notice about this is that it's a whole lot puffier and thicker than the one we showed you just a moment ago. This one is called Poly Down. And it is part of the heirloom line. A very similar batting is called Tuscany Poly, also much fluffier and thicker, also still very, very soft. These are super soft, cuddly battings. And this one is in the Tuscany line. So you've got Poly Down and Tuscany Poly, very similar in feel, texture, and look. So those are better for projects where you want a lot of dimension, a lot of puff or texture to your design. Again, if you're doing embroidery in the hoop, if you're making something uh, that maybe you want sort of a faux trapunto look, maybe you're gonna be doing applique and you want your applique pieces to pop off the background. These poly products can be great for that. And they're very easy to cut with an AccuQuilt machine. So you can take your, your template or your die and you can cut them out in shapes and place them behind your cut pieces and then hand tack or machine tack around them. So it's a great way to get things to pop off the surface. So those thicker polys, again, they're gonna be good for the same things that the Thermor is good for, right? Everyday utility quilts, quilts that are gonna get a lot of use and abuse, quilts that are gonna be used outside. They are also really good if you want a quilt that you can wash and dry normally, right? And when I say normally, that means like a normal wash. We have certain battings that must be washed in cold water. This is not one of them. So the polyester battings can be washed in warm water and dried on warm. 
Note, I, note that I did not say hot. We do not recommend washing any quilt on hot because it's not good for any component and you'll find your colors will fade more quickly. But the polyesters are really great for things like kids quilts as well, baby quilts, uh, especially if you're making a quilt that's gonna be used as some, kind of a mat for tummy time, really nice for that. Also wonderful for charity quilts. So it's a really good choice for a charity quilt because generally with a charity quilt, you're giving your quilt to a group and you may not ever get to meet the end user, the recipient of that quilt, right? If you're giving them to a hospital or a children's group or foster care, they generally get given all to one person and then that person distributes them. So you don't get to tell them how to wash the quilt. So you wanna use a batting that you know will hold up even if they don't wash it properly, right? The last batting we're gonna talk about in the polyester line is called cloud loft. Now this batting is a lot puffier and a lot thicker than the two that I just showed you. It also has quite a bit of structure to it and yet it is super, super soft, right? Easy to manipulate. This is great for any quilt where you want tremendous definition. So if you really want your piecing and or stitching to stand out, this is a really great batting for that. It is also, so great for kids quilts. It's wonderful for home decor projects. We have a lot of people who make pillows using our pillow forms and they will actually wrap the pillow form in this before they put the cover on. It adds a little extra puff. Now I just recovered my dining room chairs. I used one of our thick cotton products that we'll talk about in a moment and I used a layer of this over the top. You stretch it tightly over the seat cushion, tack everything in place, and it provides a nice smooth finish and a little extra cushion for your rear end. So it's really, really a nice batting to use for that. Now, remember earlier we talked about polyester being insulating and that we normally don't recommend it to be used in a hot, humid climate. Well, here's again one of those examples, nine reasons to use a batting, one reason not to, where we're gonna flip that around. This is one of the most popular battings for Hawaiian quilts. Now, Hawaii, if you've ever been there, you know is hot and humid pretty much all the time. But the Hawaiian quilters love the cloud loft for behind their flowers because it really makes those pop off the surface of the quilt. So again, there may be, you know, there may be a whole bunch of reasons not to use it, but you may say, well, you know what, I'm willing to forgo those reasons because the most important thing to me is that that flower shows off. And the way I know I can get the best finish for that flower is to use a batting that otherwise might not have been the best choice. So there's always a little bit of give and take. Uh-huh, go ahead. I'm on mute, here we go. Um couple of questions have popped up. One was a use case question uh, specifically about art quilts. And Jan says, a lot of art quilt teachers teach to use two layers of batting to get that puffy look. For example, mm -hmm. one layer of cotton and one wool. Would you recommend that with the poly down? You can do that. I'm actually gonna talk a lot about um, double batting towards the end of the lecture. So I will address that further. Um, but yes, you can absolutely double two different layers, meaning two different fiber types together, or you can do two of one specific type. I've even had people make a, bat, a quilt that had three layers of batting. It had one type and then it had two layers of another on top of it. Again, experimenting is a great way to learn what you do and don't like. For the art quilts, what we find is that a lot of art quilts have a lot of tiny piecing and stitching. If you use a very lofty batting like poly or wool, it is going to puff, okay? So let's say that these are your stitch lines right here. These are the areas that are going to puff. If you put a stitch line down a puffy batting, this puff is gonna be more pronounced. So by using a lower loft batting, you still show your work and you don't obscure it. So only you will know, again, by looking at your design and what you have in mind for it, whether or not a puffy batting is the best choice. And it could be that you want to have it puffy in some areas and not puffy in others. You can piece batting. So you can take two different battings, 
and put them next to each other and run a zigzag stitch over them so that you've got two different battings going on there. The only thing you need to be concerned about if you are going to wash your quilt is that the battings must have the same shrink rate. So let me mention that again. There is a column on this chart that gives you the shrink rate. If your project is going to be washed, you must have the same shrink rate on every batting used. Because if you put a non-shrinking batting and a shrinking batting together, one batting is going to shrink and one won't. And the one that is shrinking is going to pull in on the other batting and that can twist or distort your quilt. So the reason I said it could be okay to use like a poly and a cotton for an art quilt is generally art quilts are not washed, right? Our banner behind me is not, doesn't get washed. We use two different battings in that, one shrinks, one doesn't. So you can do it, you just have to understand that there are sometimes consequences to how you pair things. Okay, um, so I have one product specific question and then a general question about batting overall. So the first is cloud loft good for cheater trapunto quilting? Absolutely. Okay, and then the next was around um, if you could comment on the flammability of batting for use on a quilt for a child. Um, that was from Donna, but then Barbara also said she was taught to never use poly in babies or children's quilts because it should never, should it ever catch on fire, the poly will melt and cause severe injury, whereas cotton does not melt and will not cause severe injury. What are your thoughts? Okay. <laughs> Good question, both of you. Thank you for bringing this up. So we have a lot of people who make quilts for NICUs, right? And some NICUs have now stated that they will not accept uh, quilts that are made with polyester batting in them because they're worried about flammability. First thing to know, polyester and wool will not support a flame. They will not catch on fire, but they will, polyester will melt and it will melt onto whatever it's touching. But here's the thing to know, you're using cotton fabric. If there is a fire, your cotton is going to catch on fire and burn. So the batting is in some regards kind of irrelevant in that situation, but here's what I would say. If you don't feel comfortable with it, then don't do it. And if you are making charity quilts for a hospital or a, or a group, where the quilts are going to kids, please ask them before you make the quilt what type of batting to use. Because if you make all these great quilts and then they ask you if there's poly batting in them and you say yes and they say we can't accept them, that's going to be a sad day, right? So anytime that you're making charity quilts, always ask the group you're making them for if they have any restrictions or requirements around the quilts. Again, Polyester and wool batting, they will not support a flame, but polyester will melt. So you also need to know that because if you're gonna be ironing, you don't ever wanna to touch your ironing surface directly to the polyester batting because it will melt and it makes quite a mess on an iron plate. Hopefully I, I um, answered the question. If there's any more explanation needed, feel free to, to add that on. Um, but you just need to remember that, you know, cotton fabric catches on fire. Um, and so, you know, you, I think if you are concerned about it, I would use an all cotton batting. We even have organic batting that's wonderful for baby quilts, especially if you want everything in the quilt to be organic. And we also um, recommend using the 80-20, which is 80% cotton with just a teeny bit of polyester for an, an added little puff. <laughs> Sylvia says, piece batting, my head just exploded. Oh yes, we're gonna talk about piecing batting. Do not ever throw your batting scraps away. We have lots of great ideas for those. Okay, so any more questions about uh, polyester? Have anything else anyone wants to ask? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go on to cotton. Another question. How many of you love to use cotton batting? Love using cotton batting, it's your favorite one to use, okay? And I will say that is like 90% of every audience I've ever spoken to. 
Um, and I have talked to thousands and thousands of quilters and cotton is a fantastic fiber. It is a natural fiber, it breathes, it's wonderful. Um, there's some things to know about it. So we're gonna talk a little bit about cotton and then I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you some examples. So number one, cotton is a natural fiber and it breathes, right? Most of us know that because we probably have a lot of cotton clothing. Cotton is heavy. So if you're looking for a heavy quilt, you want a quilt that feels like grandma's quilt, right? That's really cuddly and heavy. Cotton can be a really good choice. Cotton, just like polyester, comes in a variety of loss. So it can be very thin, it can be quite thick. Cotton is, um, an, is a, an anti-allergenic type of fiber, right? So people who have allergies oftentimes want to use cotton. Um, but you need to know that cotton lints a lot. So when you're using cotton, be prepared that you're probably gonna get some lint flying around. A lot of times when I'm doing these lectures and I'm showing the cotton samples, you'll see me rubbing my nose and that's because there's cotton fibers, right? And that's just the nature of the cotton. Cotton is very soft, it's very cuddly. It is going to shrink three to 5%, which means that when it shrinks, it is going to pull in on your fabric and you're gonna get that traditional crinkled look. There's no way around that with cotton. The only way you can minimize that if you want a smoother finish is don't pre-wash your fabrics, make your project, wash them both together on cold water in a delicate cycle and then air dry them, okay? And then the two things will shrink together and you should see minimal crinkling. But if you really like that traditional crinkled look, cotton's your, cotton's your choice, right? It'll give you the best look of that. Now, a few things to note. Cotton is delicate, okay? Anytime you're buying 100% cotton batting, doesn't matter if it's our batting or somebody else's, if it is 100% cotton, meaning it has no scrim and it has no poly or anything else blended into it, it will easily stretch out of shape and you just need to be careful the way you handle it. I am gonna talk a little bit about scrim because I know somebody's gonna ask that question <laughs> since I just said that word. So here's an example of our heirloom natural cotton, which is the same as our Tuscany natural cotton, okay? It's a relatively thin cotton. Hold it this way too so you can see it. It is super soft and cuddly. Now our customers like this thin cotton. We sell thousands and thousands of rolls of this every year, and it is a really nice thin cotton. It's lightweight when it's the real thin like this, but it is still the heaviest fiber. So anytime that you're thinking about the weight of a quilt, not the warmth of a quilt, but the weight of the quilt, cotton is going to be the heaviest, poly and silk and wool are going to be the lightest. Okay, now, Again, that does not relate to weight because you can get a very warm quilt without weight, right? And the example I gave was the polyester. You can also get a quilt that's cool that has a little bit more weight to it. So just important to keep that in mind when you're making the quilt, always be thinking about weight and warmth and the use case and the finish. All of those things are important when you're choosing a batting. So let's say that this is a roll of batting, cotton batting, and I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna load that roll onto a long arm machine, or I'm using a domestic machine and I'm gonna ma be manipulating it a lot inside of a quilt top and a quilt back. When you pull on cotton, I'm gonna demonstrate this on this piece. As you pull on the cotton, it's just like a cotton ball, okay? It will stretch out of shape. If you keep pulling on it, you can put holes in it. Now look at how distorted and out of shape this is, right? The edge is no longer straight. So that doesn't mean that it's poor quality. Again, this applies to all 100% cotton batting. It's made just like a cotton ball. The cotton fibers are pulled, uh, put together. And if you pull on it, you will stretch it out of shape. Once you stretch it out of shape, you cannot get it back in shape. So just be gentle when you're handling 100% cotton um, so that you don't distort it. When might that be important? Well, if you're making a quilt that you're gonna have a hard time squaring up, 
having wonky batting is not going to help you in that effort. Also, a lot of people use cotton batting for show quilts, and sometimes they have a curved edge on the show quilt. Well, if your batting is all cattywampus, it's probably going to be really tough to get that quilt squared up. Also, if you make your quilts and you send them to a professional quilter, okay, it's going to be challenging for that quilter if your batting is, is all stretched out of shape, right? The quilter generally provides the batting, but sometimes people bring batting to them. So if you're pulling batting off of a roll, just be real gentle. Don't grab the two corners and yank on them because you're gonna have two little like bunny ears on the end and then it's gonna sort of dip in the middle. Put either a, um, I usually take fabric or yardstick, roll up a first couple things and use that so you're pulling the cotton evenly. Okay, that can be very helpful. So let's talk a little bit about what cotton batting is good for and maybe not good for. Cotton batting is great for everyday quilts. It's great for children's quilts. It's wonderful if you want that traditional crinkled look, right? A couple things I would note about it. Number one, it is going to take a long time to dry, just like your cotton fabrics. So if you're using the quilt, say, in a camper or you use it out for a picnic and you throw it in your trunk, um, just know that it's going to take a while to dry and you don't want to leave it sitting there in that damp condition. You want to get it aired out so that it doesn't get moldy or mildewy. The other thing to think about is for show quilts. We do not recommend 100% cotton for show quilts. And the reason is that cotton loves to hold creases. So as you fold up a quilt, you finish this beautiful quilt that you've spent months, maybe years making, you fold it up in the smallest box possible to save on postage, you send it off to a show, and it's gonna sit folded like that, maybe for a couple months. Now the judges take it out and they judge it, and then they fold it back up and it sits again, and it may have all the other quilts stacked on top of it. All that time, those creases are getting embedded in that cotton. And that cotton does not give up those creases easily. So when you are going to do a show quilt, there are other battings that we recommend, and I will be talking about those. You can use cotton batting, but we recommend you put another batting on top of it so that it is not on the front surface of your quilt. There's nothing sadder than when we go to set up our show booth and we get to walk through the show early and we see these gorgeous quilts with real deep creases, right? And we always know that that is cotton batting that is inside there. And that is just because the cotton likes to hold a crease. Wool does not. So that's why we often recommend that people use wool for their show quilts, depending on what kind of finish they want. So with that batting that I showed you was natural. This is a bleached version. So it's just a bleach cotton that we use to make the batting. And it is great for any kind of quilt that has white or light fabric. So like the banner behind me that has a lot of white, um, if you have a lot of lights, pastels, a bleach batting can be really nice because it'll keep your colors true and it'll keep your whites really bright white. So if you're doing a high contrast quilt where you want like maybe black and white or maybe some bright colors in white, um, I would use the white batting because it's really gonna keep that white nice and bright. We have another batting that is that same natural cotton that I showed you, and it is called Heirloom Natural with Scrim, okay? It looks just like that other cotton batting, but here's the difference. I can pull on this batting as hard as I want to all day long and nothing happens. It does not stretch out of shape, and that is because it has a scrim layer. So for those who may not be familiar with scrim, scrim is simply a stabilizing layer. It's like an interfacing or a stabilizer that you might use in clothing or other projects. And we have needle punched it into the cotton. So I have pulled this apart and uh, don't worry if you buy this product, you won't find it easily comes apart. I had to really work to get these pieces apart but I wanna show it to you. So this is cotton, this is scrim. The scrim is very thin, very soft, and very strong. It acts like a web for the cotton. So here's a layer of cotton. 
here's the layer of scrim and very sharp needles come in and punch the scrim into the cotton. Now, if I were to hand you this and say to you, which side is the scrim on? You might have a really hard time telling me by the feel of this because you really can't feel it. It feels soft, just like the cotton. It's embedded into the cotton fiber, but again, it provides tremendous strength to this cotton. So with the other cottons, you have to stitch every four inches. With this cotton, you can stitch up to eight inches apart. So the scrim provides stability and strength, durability, and it enables you to have more design choices because now you can stitch further apart if that's what you need. It is great for quilts that are gonna get a lot of use and abuse. Think kids pulling each other around on a quilt on the floor, right? Could be great for that. But it's also great for things like whole cloth quilts where your stitching is the thing you wanna stand out. And we usually recommend putting two layers together to really get some loft and definition. It can also be great for those quilts that are gonna have a curved edge. Maybe you're making an art quilt that has some kind of cool pieces, right? Kind of different shapes, not squared off. This would be a really nice batting for that because it's low loft and it's also able to be shaped very easily. It will stay squared up, right? So really, really nice for that. Now, you heard me mention needle punching, okay? So needle punching is part of the process of making batting. There are lots of different things. We start with loose fiber and we do not weave batting. Batting is known as a non-woven textile. So we use loose product. It goes through lots of processes and one of the processes is needle punching. So if you see on a package of batting, it says needle punch, that simply means means that we've used these long boards, very long, sharp needles to punch the fiber together. It provides the structure and the integrity of the batting. That needle punching somewhat stiffens and flattens the fiber. So that's why you'll notice our normal cottons are fairly thin. Not a problem until you really heavily stitch a quilt. Has anybody ever used cotton batting? Stitch the daylights out of your quilt and it comes out stiff as a board? right? You go to pick up and it kind of floats or you could stand it in the corner. That happens because that cotton has already been needle punched, okay? And that flattened and stiffened the fiber. Now, when you hold the cotton, it doesn't look or feel stiff, but now you're going to do a bunch of stiffing, stitching to it. It's going to get stiffer and it's really not great if you're making a bedspread, right? Because a bedspread is kind of just going to float over the top of you. It won't drape nicely. It won't be a cuddly quilt. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of stitching, we generally don't recommend using cotton or use another batting with it so that that other batting can impact the drapeability. So we talked about these three cottons that are thinner. We have a newer product. It is not on that sheet. It is a newer product. So I'm gonna give you the name so you can write it down. And it is called Tuscany Supreme Cotton. Again, Tuscany Supreme Cotton. It is quite a bit thicker than those other cottons. I'll hold it up for you so you can see it. And this is the softest and most cuddly of all of our battings. It is a very, very soft cotton. Again, it has all the same attributes of the other cottons I talked about. Um, it does not have a scrim layer. It actually will shrink a little bit more than the other cottons unless you heavily stitch it because it's a little looser. We don't heavily needle punch this cotton. We do some needle punching, but not a lot. It's a very difficult product to make because you want it to stay light and soft and fluffy and not stiffen up with a lot of stitching, but you need the cotton to hold together too. So it's this very fine line we, make, we walk when we make this product. The nice thing about it, you can stitch the daylights out of it and that batting will not get rigid stiff like the other cottons. So let me show you an example. This is the wash test sample for that product, okay? Hopefully you can see the texture in this. There is a lot of stitching, a lot of pebbling right in the middle. You'll also notice deep creases. Now I fold this sample differently every time I fold it and I fold it very light, loosely. 
right? I don't crease it hard, but you see how those creases grab onto the cotton. But the nice thing about this is even where it's heavily quilted, this still is totally flexible. So if you want to use 100% cotton, you want nice loft, nice texture and definition, and you really want it to be a flexible drapey quilt and a quilt that feels like the old fashioned nice quilts, the Tuscany Supreme Cotton is what I would recommend. There's nothing in the, in the cotton lineup that is gonna give you that definition like that will. That sample I held up just now had two layers. It is very thick and very heavy. Everybody who comes to our booth and picks up that sample puts it over themselves and sort of cuddles with it because it feels amazing, right? It feels like those wonderful traditional quilts. So it's a really good choice for that. But again, it will shrink a little bit more than the other cottons, more like four to 6%, unless it's heavily stitched, in which case the, stitch, the uh, shrinkage should be about the same. So any other questions? We have more questions yep. about cotton. Oh, questions, yep. So for cotton, can you pre-wash cotton batting? You cannot pre-wash any batting, or you should not. People do it, you should not. The reason being, again, this is a non-woven textile. It's not like fabric, right? Fabric has a weave and it's got a structure to it like this. Batting is a non-woven. Right, And we do some processes to connect the fibers together. If you take that raw bat and throw it in a washing machine, you have just ruined it. You've ruined all the integrity that we spent all our time putting into that batting to make it structurally sound to hold up in your quilt over many, many, many years. So there are ways to pre-wash batting. I don't share them because if you don't do them exactly right, you will ruin the batting. So please do not pre-wash any of our battings. You'll notice on all of our packaging now, it actually says that in really big letters because we had a lot of people who had been incorrectly told they could just throw the batting in a washing machine and they pulled out sort of an alien <laughs> looking creature and that batting is, is useless at that point. You can't use it in a quilt. Great. What is the scrim fiber content? That is polyester. But I guarantee you, if you felt it, you would think it was cotton. It, it feels just like the cotton does. It's very, very soft, but it's poly, and that's what gives it that strength. Okay, and then this is with respect to placement and mm -hmm. a batting that has a scrim, um, cotton batting with scrim. How do you know um, which side is right side when facing down towards the backing? Okay, how many of you have heard there's a right and a wrong side to batting, right? Some people have probably heard the dimply side goes up or the dimply side goes down. Um, our batting does not have a right and a wrong side. Every product, except the one with the scrim, is made the same on both sides, meaning that the product goes through the process, it flips over and it goes the other way, and the batting is the same on both sides. If it is not, you need to reach out to us because maybe you got a bad bat. We're not perfect, sometimes we make mistakes. But when it comes to batting, there for our battings, I cannot speak for other manufacturers, for our battings, there is no right or wrong side. The scrim is only on one side. And again, there's no right or wrong side. You can put the scrim up or you put the scrim down. It is personal preference. I will tell you 97, 98% of all the quilters, including professional long armors I talk to, put the scrim facing down. They said that they feel it helps with preventing nesting of your thread on the bottom of the quilt and that it also sort of acts like a net to catch some of the cotton lint or fiber. It keeps that out of their machine. So for most long armors, they're going to put the scrim down. Um, for everybody I know who quilts, that's generally how they use it as well, but it's really up to you. Again, we don't, we don't dictate that. It will work either way. Okay. So if scrim is poly, what causes a person to be allergic to it? Uh, allergic to what? Um, to it. So Donna, you might need to elaborate on that question. Um, um, poly, well, po our polyesters are actually anti-allergenic. Mm -hmm. So it, it may be that there was something used on the poly, on whatever she bought that caused her to have a reaction to it. Um, but the, the poly is anti-allergenic. It's just a 
just a poly fiber. I handle it all the time and I'm really sensitive to things. Um, and I've never had a problem. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. People can be allergic to all sorts of things, um, but it is, it is an anti-allergenic fiber. Great. Um, and then this is a, a forward looking question from Debbie. Mm -hmm. After you speak about wool and silk batting, will you talk about bamboo and does Hobbs have a bamboo batting? I will very briefly address bamboo at the end. Okay, great. Uh -huh. Okay, we're going to go ahead and jump into um, 8020 blends. Okay, so we have four 8020 products in the heirloom line, and then we have one in the Tuscany line. So, why would we make a blend? What is a blend? Uh, what is the purpose of a blend? Well, the blend can be made for a lot of reasons. Number one, it can be done for um, finish, right? In the case of our 8020 cotton poly, adding 20% polyester provides a little puff or loft to the otherwise fairly flat cotton. So it can give you a little more definition. It also adds strength because the polyester is a strong fiber. It adds a little more strength, much like the scrim added the strength to the cotton. So it's gonna give you a little more strength. It, it can also change the temperature value of a batting, right? If you add a little poly, you're making that batting a little warmer because the poly doesn't breathe the same way the cotton does. So breathability and warmth are a factor. It can also be done um, to uh, give a, uh, a strength and a durability. So charity battings that we sell, the ones we sell to do charity quilts are 80-20 cotton poly and one of our polyester battings. Now, a lot of people also use all of our polyesters for their charity quilts. And the reason being that you can wash those, again, normally, normal, warm water and, and, a, and a cool to warm dryer, and they're gonna wash up just fine. So another reason you might do the, the blend is to give different finishes, right? So on the, for an example, with the scrim, which is really not a blend because they are two separate layers put together, but it provides some strength there. So there are lots of different reasons that we create a blend. Um, and when I get to the Tuscany cotton wool, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But let's go ahead and focus on the heirloom 8020. This is 80% cotton and 20% poly. It's that same cotton that I held up, the same thinner cotton that I held up before. And then it has 20% polyester blended. Well, number one, that means it's got a little bit of sponge and give, and it doesn't stretch out the way the cotton will. It's got a little more loft, a little more strength, a little more structure, a little more puff to it. It is a wonderful batting for everyday quilts. Anything that you're making for your home, Right, again, things for the table, wall hangings, um, wonderful for holiday projects. Another thing that's nice about having the 20% polyester in there, this will not hold the creases quite as bad as 100% cotton, but it's still got 80% cotton in there. So if you are making something that's going to be folded up a lot, like if you're making a holiday quilt that only comes out once a year, or a quilt for the guest room that only comes out when you have company, Consider what kind of batting you put in that so that you don't have to do a lot of steaming and pressing to make it look nice before it's displayed. So that is the natural that I just showed you. That also comes in a bleached, which is 80% bleached cotton, 20% polyester. One of the nice things about the bleach cotton and the bleach cotton poly is that the cotton has already shrunk a little when it was bleached. So that means that generally when you use those batting products, they'll shrink a little bit less than the natural cotton. And it's just a bleaching process. We buy that cotton bleached already, and then we turn it into batting. We also buy black dyed cotton and turn that into an 80-20 cotton blend. So the white is great for white or light fabrics, like the banner behind me. The black is great for projects made with black fabrics or dark fabrics or bright jewel tones, even like the jewel tones in the quilt on the, corner, on the corners behind me. 
So it doesn't have to be just for black batting. It could be for brown or dark blue or green or purple or a lot of jewel tones. If you're making a, a high contrast quilt where you've got maybe black sashing, black borders, and then real bright colors in it, I would absolutely use this black batting for a couple reasons. One is you're going to see no shadowing from the batting underneath your black fabric. The second thing is, you know how normally when you finish a quilt that's all dark fabrics, what do you have to do? You have to go and you have to grab your lint roller, right? And you have to spend time getting all the lint off of that fabric. You will never have to do that with the black batting. It doesn't shed lint the same way cotton, 100% cotton does. And because it's black, you're not gonna see it. So it is a time saver and all the people that we know that are that are known for making black quilts use black batting, right? Or if they use, again, a lot of dark or really deep jewel tone types of colors, it's really good for that. And just like the bleach batting, the black batting will shrink a little bit less because that dyeing process actually shrinks the fiber a little bit. Just so you know, in case anybody is curious, it is a color fast dye. So you don't have to worry about that black dye leaching out into your quilt when you wash your quilt. It is a color fast dye. The final heirloom product that we have is an 80-20 fusible. Remember in the beginning where I talked about spraying batting and I said there's one batting you cannot do that to? That is this batting. So this is a piece of fusible batting and you notice it's stuck together. When you pull it apart in the packaging, it is going to stick to itself and that is normal. If you leave it in a hot car, you may find it is very, very stuck to itself. So that is one thing I will tell you. If you buy this fusible batting, please don't leave it in a hot car, especially in the South, um, where it can get quite hot in the car because you will find that it has adhered to itself and it'd be real tough to get it apart. This is a 80-20 blend, just like our regular 80-20. And it has a fusing medium sprayed across the top and underneath. It is a non-toxic water soluble fusing medium. How many of you spray base quilts? Spray base to, to get your sandwich together. Okay, this can take that step completely away. We've already done the messy, smelly work. So you don't have overspray. You don't, it's not gonna gunk up your needle. There's no fumes, doesn't have any smell at all. It is sprayed onto both sides and you're going to activate it with heat. You're going to take, let me grab a little sample here to show you. You're going to take your backing fabric, your top fabric and your batting, which is in the middle and make your normal sandwich. And you are going to press from the top with a very hot dry iron for three to five seconds in each spot. That is enough to fuse all three layers. Now, some irons get hotter than others. So what I recommend if you've never used this before is that you're gonna make your quilt sandwich, you're going to press into a corner, do three to five seconds, stop, let this completely cool, and then you're gonna to wanna to tug on the fabric to make sure it's adhered. There is nothing holding this together other than that batting in the middle. There's no stitching in this. This has been sitting like this for almost nine months. I use this every time I lecture, three, five, six times a week. And it holds up very well. So if you're used to doing like quilt as you go projects, or you're gonna be doing applique, you can use this batting, which is double-sided. Again, it's on both sides to make your shapes right, and or to adhere your pieces together and then take it and work on it whenever you can. Now, let's say that you're gonna do applique and you wanna cut some shapes out of your fabric and you want those shapes to pop off the background of your quilt or your project. This is a piece of that same fabric with the batting, no fabric on this side. All I did on this case is I took a parchment sheet, right? These Reynolds pop-up sheets. If you don't have these in your sewing room, go get you some. <laughs> they're great. They're like $3 a box. I use them for baking um, and they're wonderful. You just lay that on your ironing surface. Then you lay down your batting. You lay your fabric on top of that, just like this and the same process. Now you've got your fabric attached to your batting and this side of your batting is still fusible. 
run this through your AccuQuilt machine, cut shapes out of it, or you can use a template or you can freehand cut and get your shapes. Now you lay the shape onto your quilted surface, press from the top, and then this will fuse onto that surface. So it can be a great time saver. Because we had so many people that were buying that product and cutting strips to use with jelly rolls for different projects, we now also make that same batting in strips. Okay, so it comes, it comes in a roll like this. It's two and a quarter inches wide because your fabric is two and a half. And you need this to be a little bit more narrow and it's 25 yards long. So what could you do with that? Well, you could make cute little things like this, right? So this is a little basket that was made. It is just tubes of fabric and batting that are zigzag stitched together. You can pop the handle in, now it's a scrap bin. It's great for handles, it's great for quilt as you go, for sashing, for jelly roll rugs, for bags. If you have any of those bags that usually require you to put foam into them as a stabilizer, put a layer of this batting in there. Everything will be adhered together, super simple to sew. You won't have things sliding all over the place. So it can be really, really wonderful for that. Again, the key things are make sure your iron is very hot and dry. You do not want any steam because the steam can get the fabric wet and that can keep it from, from bonding to your fabric. So any questions about that? Not related to the fusible, um, but there was a question in general about poly um, or a comment, which was I've had problems with poly batting bearding after a while of usage. Do your potty Poly batting beard. Wow, that's a tongue twister. Poly batting <laughs> beard. Is there anything that could be done to keep poly battings from bearding? Okay, so um, I am going to address bearding at the end of the lecture because that's a really important topic. It is almost never a batting issue when you get bearding. There are lots of things that cause bearding, and I'm going to tell you the things to avoid and then how to fix it if it happens to you. Um, Generally, it is only going to happen if it's a really cheap poly batting, meaning that it's a poor quality product. Okay, I don't, I have never, I, I've been with Hobbs for over five years. I've never had a complaint. I get the complaints. People call me when there's an issue. I have never had a complaint about bearding with poly batting. I've only had one complaint in five years of bearding that happened as a result of, of batting. And it was because the batting had been steam pressed and it was wool and it felt it. And we're going to talk about that when we get to wool. Um, so I will, again, I'm going to address bearding. So hopefully that will help you. Um, but generally it is not, it is not a batting issue. Um, there's other things that generally cause it, including um, needle and fabric and tension. Okay. And then just to confirm um, that the heirloom 8020 is the only black batting that Hobbs carries. Okay, that's what I Correct, thought. correct, yeah. So I did notice um, Donna had said um, about the poly that the person was allergic to. It was not me, it was a person who will not touch anything with scrim. So I was wondering, I, I will tell you that there is a lot of misinformation about scrim. When I first started lecturing for Hobbs, I would you know, go through the list of products and every time I'd get to scrim, it was like being in a football game with a wave. I would get this wave of snarled up faces that would go across the audience every time I said the word scrim. And after this happened like a third time, I finally stopped and I said, okay, people, what's the deal with the scrim? And I got an earful of things that they had been told about scrim. Not one of them was true. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you, if you want to use cotton, you want it to hold up well, and you really don't want to have to worry about it stretching out of shape and you want it to be strong and you want lots of design options, Scrim is your best friend. Scrim is a fantastic product. But I will tell you that a lot of people have texture issues. So I know someone who cannot touch those microfiber towels because the texture of that on his skin like makes him nuts. So it may be a texture thing, or it may be that they were given information, or maybe the scrim was made with something else that they are allergic to. But this poly scrim, I've never had any issues. And I will tell you that 
probably one in five people I, I lecture to or talk to at our booth actually tries it. And almost every one of them will then email me or call me and say, oh my gosh, I love this, right? Because again, because of all the benefits that it gives you. So that's just my little spiel on Scrim. <laughs> I feel like it's always gotten a bad rap. It's like the redheaded step kid. Um, can you use the fusible batting on free motion quilting with a regular sewing machine? Yes, you can. It will not gunk up your needle. Um, it is a, it is, I mean, it, when you feel it, the batting's going to feel a little bit stiff and a little bit sticky, um, but it's, it's not like the spray base that you use. So it'll work fine with that. I will tell you most long armors don't use the, the fusible batting because they tend to float their tops. Um, but we do have some long armors that use it as well. Okay, and Donna, good. I'm glad you got you, glad you got your question answered. Sorry for my big tirade on screen. <laughs> I just think it's a fantastic product, and it's a shame that there's a lot of misinformation out there. So the last 8020 we're going to talk about is cotton and wool. Okay, and this is in the Tuscany line again, Tuscany cotton wool. And it's a little bit loftier, puffier, and softer than the 8020 cotton poly. It's 80% cotton, 20% wool. The wool is a super washed wool, meaning that it has been cleaned. It's super smooth, super soft, and provides amazing loft. So one of the things that people use when they're making a show quilt is this 8020 cotton wool. They'll use a layer of that with a layer of wool on top. And the reason they do that is because that wool keeps the creases out. So the 8020 cotton wool is beautiful for throws or bed quilts. I love it for those kinds of quilts. If you're making a traditional quilt, it can be really nice for that too. You can double it up and get amazing loft and definition. Here's a little project. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, Maureen Mc Maureen uh, Cracknell. Um, she's one of the art gallery fabric designers. This is a little pouch you might have seen on her Instagram feed. Um, it's got a lot of texture. And this was made with the cotton wool. That's her favorite batting. We also have another quilter. He goes by natural born quilter, Brett Lewis. He's up in Canada. His favorite combination is 80-20 cotton poly and 80-20 cotton wool with the cotton wool on top. Again, extra definition, doesn't hold the creases. So the, there is a really great reason to double back. Again, because you can get different textures front and back. You can get more weight. You can get more or less structure. You can increase drapeability. So there's a lot of different reasons that people might double bat a quilt. And, I, and I'm gonna address this a little bit more in just a second. So after the cotton wool, then we have wool. Now this is 100% US sourced super washed wool. It is super, super soft and smooth. That super washing process makes it really smooth. So more like a merino wool feel as opposed to one of those scratchy wool sweaters. So it's a really nice texture. I know most of us are, are kind of, uh, you know, feelers. We want to feel everything and we want to see everything, right? Because we're visual and textural. So this is a really nice soft batting to work with. It also has had the lanolin removed out of it. So for people who are sometimes sensitive to wool, not allergic, but sensitive to wool, they've often found that they're able to handle this wool without any problem because that lanolin has been removed. The wool is ideal for show quilts because it will not hold a crease. So you can fold up your quilt, take it out, and within about 15, 20 minutes, all the creases loft out of it, just kind of softens. Again, you can do the same trick with the water. If you happen to get some that's in the heirloom bag, because this is very tightly compressed in here, you're gonna have a little more wrinkling and creasing in this packaging than you would in the Tuscany folded packaging. What I recommend, if you buy this product, either in a big roll or in this bat, if you're not gonna use it right away, please take it out of the plastic and cover it in fabric. For the bats, I recommend use a king size pillowcase, just slip it over, close it up. 
for the rolls, you can use a king size pillowcase on both ends. Just make sure it's covered in fabric because it is 100% wool and the moths will go after it if you leave it sitting open. But the reason I tell you to take it out of the plastic is because this is being very tightly compressed. If you buy the really big rolls, you'll see how tightly compressed they are. When you pop open that bag, it, that batting will go poof, right? Because it's being tightly compressed in there. Well, you don't wanna leave it tightly compressed for a long period of time. So if you're gonna use the wool, but not, let's say not for six months, just relax that bag off of it and cover it in fabric. The wool is ideal for hand quilting and it's great for anything where you want a lot of definition and texture and loft. So if you're doing a lot of piecing and stitching, you want those to really stand out, wool is awesome for that. It can also be used for clothing insulation. We actually make clothing insulation from the same wool for very high end outer garments. Um, and this wool is beautiful for that. It is a natural fiber, it's antimicrobial, so it's not gonna mold or mildew, and it will breathe. It will also absorb up to 30% of its weight in water and then expel that moisture. So it dries more quickly than a lot of battings. Now this batting does require cold water washing on a delicate cycle, no heavy agitation or spin, and you should air dry quilts made with this. But I will tell you in every audience I've ever had, I've had at least one person who raises her hand and said, oh, I wash that stuff I'm warm all the time. <laughs> Again, not pre-washing. This is once it's inside of a project. Now, our standard washing instructions for all quilts is cold water, delicate cycle, no heavy agitation or spin, air fluff dry in the dryer or air dry is best. It's best for all components of the quilt, the fabric, the thread and the batting and any adornments you might've put on the quilt. But we know the reality, right? You have a new sleep deprived mom whose baby just spit up all over the, the quilt. She's not thinking cold water wash, oh, air dry, right? She's thinking, get the stain out of the quilt, get the baby happy again. And so we do have battings like the 80-20 blends and the polyesters that can be washed warm and, and dried warm and they can be washed warm so you can get stains out, right? So just consider that. Anytime you're choosing a batting, think about who's gonna be using it. If it's for you, you can use anything you want, but I wouldn't recommend using wool in a quilt that's a really high use quilt that maybe you're gonna take outside, right? If you're gonna have a quilt in the RV or a picnic quilt, I wouldn't use it for that um, because again, it should you should wash that quilt in cold water and that may not be easy to do if you're out camping. The final batting we're gonna talk about is silk. And our silk is another low loft batting. I'll hold it up. And what I want to bring home with the silk is that generally when people come and visit us at a booth and maybe they say to me, I really want a hand quilt. And I'll say, you know what? Nothing better than the wool and silk. They're right down at the end of the booth, go check them out. And they pick up samples. We have boxes of samples of these and they pick up the silk and they always look at me like I've lost my mind. <laughs> like this is silk because it doesn't feel like what we think it's supposed to feel like. It's not silky. Right? It's not like those nice silky pajamas. It is raw silk and it's going to feel more like raw silk or Dupiani silk. It has a little bit of a structure stiffness to it, but wash this one time and it is a totally different batting. So that very stiff structure batting becomes this, right? That just drapes like nothing else we make. And it is that silk that also provides a cool finish and amazing definition for your stitching. So what would we use silk for? Art quilts, phenomenal for art quilts. Again, low loft provides really nice definition to your stitching. If you want some puff and structure, go with the wool. Really nice for our quilts. Great for wall hangings because it will hang really straight. Generally your wall hangings are not washed right? So that silk is going to remain kind of stiff. If you want more drape, then once your project's done, go ahead and wash it. 
the silk is beautiful for clothing. I don't know if any of you were at Quilt Market or Quilt Festival a few years back where Gilbert Muniz had a couture exhibit in the show hall where all the quilts were. Our silk batting was in all of his clothing. That's what he uses for his clothing. There's one coming out this fall, if that show goes forward. Uh, Chris Vieira, uh, who goes by Quilter on the Run 1, uh, the number one. Um, she is going to have an exhibit of her clothing. She uses our silk in her clothing as well. She makes these amazing coats and jackets that are super heavily adorned, very, very heavily stitched. They float and they drape and they can be worn year round because the silk breathes and it's natural. So if you're making clothing, you could use thermor, wool or silk. If I'm asked for my opinion, I always recommend the silk. Number one, once you wash that garment, it will drape beautifully. It's going to be lightweight. It will always feel cool to the touch. That's a characteristic of that fiber. And it just is a really lightweight fiber that doesn't add bulk, right? The way maybe a wool might. Um, and it will keep you almost as warm as down when it needs to, but it's never going to feel hot. So it's a really, really beautiful fiber to work with. And again, great for hand quilting as well. Let's see if we have any questions. Um, would I recommend silk for hand embroidered quilts? Absolutely. The only thing to remember again is that with the silk, just like with the wool, cold water wash, really, really important. And I would air dry a silk quilt. You'll find that the wool and the silk and the polys those battings dry really fast, right? Especially the wool and the silk. Those battings are gonna dry really quick. Your cotton battings are gonna take a lot longer to dry. So if you need to air dry a quilt, let's say that you wanna do something pretty elaborate and you're okay with air drying a quilt, I would use the silk or the wool. Okay, so that is it for the different fiber groupings. Now, hopefully, You've learned enough where you feel comfortable with kind of picking which, which fibers you would or would not use. Let's talk a little bit about bearding. So the first thing I will say to avoid bearding, make sure you're using quilt shop level quality fabric. That's fabric that's generally gonna be 10 to 15 or more per yard. It has a high thread count, 200 thread count or higher. And it is going to provide a tight weave. I know we all like to get deals on fabric. I've bought some less expensive fabrics once in a while, depending on the project. But I would never use a $4 a yard fabric in a quilt because you're going to spend a lot of time, maybe a lot of money on all the other components of your quilt. And if you buy a $4 a yard fabric, chances are when you hold it up to the light, it's going to look like this, right? It's got an open weave that weave is not tight enough to hold batting in. It doesn't matter what batting you put in there, you're probably gonna have problems down the road. It may not beard when you're actually working on the quilt, but chances are it is gonna beard when you wash the quilt and you'll start seeing little tufts of batting coming out. So for anyone who may not be familiar with what bearding is, it is when the batting comes up through the surface of the fabric it can come up on the top or on the bottom or both. The other thing to always think about is always put a new needle in. And I get a lot of pushback on this. Every time I get a lecture, I get people saying, oh, I change my needle once every six months, whether I need to or not. <laughs> if you're making a big quilt, especially an important quilt, please change your needle before you start. The needle is the least expensive component of your quilt and it'll make or bake, break the process of quilting and your finished quilt. If you don't have a good new needle, it can cause skip stitches. It can cause your thread to shred. It can cause nesting. It can break your thread. It can make too big of a hole, which allows batting to come up through. It can create a whole bunch of problems while you're quilting and in your finished quilt. So let's say you did all the things right. You put a new needle in, you're using really nice quality fabric and you're starting and you start to stitch and you start to see bearding. The most important thing is to stop and fix the problem. Do not continue thinking it'll stop or that you can fix it by washing the quilt. 
because washing the quilt is actually going to make it beard more and it'll beard every time you wash the quilt. Once a quilt beards, you should dry clean it. And that's the only time that we recommend a quilt be dry clean. So let's say you're, you're stitching along, you see bearding. Stop immediately, take your needle out and put in a brand new needle. And you might say to me, well, I just put in a brand new needle because you told me to. Well, it may be that that needle you put in isn't perfect, right? Feel it. Does it have a burr on it? Is it rough at all? Is there any part of the needle, even up around the eye, anything that isn't super smooth? Feel the end of the needle. That needle needs to be smooth and sharp, or it can actually grab batting and pull it through the stitch holes. So put a new needle in, start again. If you're still seeing bearding, stop again, take your needle out and go down one size in your needle. Now, it may be that you always use that same size needle, but it could be that the particular combination of the fabric and batting and thread you're using requires a smaller size needle. So just go down one size and try stitching again. If you're still seeing bearding after doing that, check the tension on your machine. It could be that the tension is too tight, right? And it's pulling on the weave of the fabric and allowing the batting to come up through those larger holes. It's also important to pair your needle and your thread, okay? Needles have a groove on the front that allows the thread to slide cleanly down. And if you don't have the right needle and thread together, you can get shredding you can get breakage, you can get skip stitches, you can get bearding. Because you're sort of, if they're not paired correctly, it can be forcing the needle into the fabric and kind of dragging the, the thread in and out. And that thread is then tugging on the batting that it's going through. So any of those things can cause bearding. There is a wonderful lady who does a lecture just like I do. Um, Jen, I'm happy to introduce you if you'd like to. Uh, her name is Rhonda Pierce. She's a lecturer for Schmetz Needles, and she gives a fantastic needle lecture. There are also thread companies that give great thread lectures. Absolutely sign up for those if you have the opportunity, because you will learn just as much about needles and thread as you did about batting. And I guarantee you they will improve your quilting process and your outcomes. I listened to her needle lecture. She listened to my batting lecture and we both came out of it saying, oh my gosh, I had no idea, right? I mean, you think needles, how, how many different options can there be? Trust me, it, it really matters. And it's made a big difference even in my own sewing um, in, in the way I do things and what I would choose, right? I pay more attention to that now. So it's really, really important to think about that. Um, Madeline says, this old quilter has learned a lot today. <laughs> that is, is wonderful to hear. <laughs> That's what we're here for, right? Okay. Is there anybody else who has a question? Oh, bamboo. Ah, bamboo. Yes, let's talk about. It. So Hobbs does not make bamboo batting. Um, that is a choice that we have made as a company. We do get a lot of requests for it, um, but we do we have chosen not to make that type of batting. There are some uh, bamboo battings on the market that I've heard good things about. Uh, one is made by Quilter's Dream. Um, there is a, another one. Um, that is made by Stitch in Time. And Jen, this is Lynn's own batting line. Um, it's called Stitch in Time. And she has several different uh, bamboo products. One is a 50-50 bamboo cotton and a bamboo with scrimp. Um, and very soft and has great reviews. Um, so if somebody's interested in that, um, then you know, give it a try. Here's what I will tell you about bamboo. A lot of people ask us, um, well, but you know, it's it's 100% bamboo. Um, so first of all, it's not um, because it is always blended with something. Like in, in Lynn's case, she has a bamboo that has a scrim. Sometimes it's a 50-50 cotton and bamboo blend, or it'll be bamboo blended with other fibers like rayon or tinsel. 
Um, and what you need to know is how those additional fibers behave. You learned a lot about cotton today. So if you take 50% bamboo and 50% cotton, you already know how the 50% cotton behaves based on what you learned today. So just take that into the conversation. What I recommend is that you reach out to the companies that make those products and ask their experts all about the product, what it's good for, what it's not good for, when you should use it, how you should care for it, et cetera. Because again, I've heard great things about bamboo. We don't make one, I don't use bamboo, um, but that doesn't mean that it's not a good product. It's just a choice we've made. Lots of praise going on here in the comments. Yay! Yay. <laughs> well, I love this. I love doing this. I do this like two to six times a week from home. Um, and I hope it shows. I hope that you feel like you learned a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, again, there are so many different battings. And the best thing you can do, especially if you're going to create a, pro a, a project with a batting you've never used before, please take a little bit of the batting and make yourself a little sample quilt with the thread and the fabric you're going to use, bind it up, wash it and dry it, however uh, the instructions are on the packaging, and test it before you make your quilt, right? There's nothing worse than if you make a big quilt and you think it's going to come out one way and it comes out a different way because of the batting. So always pay attention to that. Again, for double batting, there are lots of recipes that you can use for what you pair together. The most important thing is that they have the same shrink rate if you are going to be washing that quilt. One question, there was one question about what to use with an apron. Um, it would, I guess it would depend a couple things. Um, number one, consider if you use something like poly, that it'll be very washable, right? So if you get food spilled on it, you can throw it in the washer and the dryer and warm water, and it's gonna wash up great, but it will be a little warmer. So if you've got the oven and all the burners going and you're making Thanksgiving dinner, that might not be as desirable. Um, I generally use lower loft. So I would use something like Thermor or the Silk. Um, again, the silk does need to be washed cold, so you want to make sure that you're not, you know, uh, getting yourself in a situation where if it gets really stained by something, that you're going to have a hard time getting the stain out without washing it hot, which is not good for the silk batting. Great. So, um, Jen, do you want to talk at all about the batting and, and your... Um, yeah, so I just want to thank everyone who attended today. We really appreciate you. I'm sure you have busy lives, but if you are like me, you learned a lot. I can definitely say I have a new appreciation for poly batting. I was a cotton kind of gal, but I'm anxious to give it a try because I think it's going to meet some of my needs where I had gaps before. Um, this was a lot of information, ladies. Um, as I said at the beginning, and I'll repeat now, this is being recorded. You will all receive a replay link um, to watch it again and reabsorb all the information. But just remember, she outlined five questions to ask yourself, right? What are you making? What kind of finish do you want? The surface? Um, who is it for? What's the use case? And how is it going to be cared for? And if you think about the answers to those five questions, and then you look at the wonderful chart she provided, which shares a summary of the Hobbs Bonded Fibers products, you'll be able to eliminate, and then from there, select one that's going to be best for you. If you still are confused or don't know which one you should use, Stephanie has provided her contact information, not only in the chat above, but I'm also going to provide that in an email that will come to all of you. So feel free to reach out to her and to myself, Jen, here at Red Thread Studio. You'll have my email as well. Um, I'm going to share a link here in the chat where you can purchase the Hobbs uh, batting. Um, currently, we don't sell it in our web store, redthreadstudio.com, but I have partnered with Batting Super Sale. Um, Stephanie mentioned Lynn. Lynn is a wonderful lady there um, that sells the Hobbs batting. So everything that has been discussed today, you can find there. I'd appreciate if you did use my link um, for your purchase. Shipping is included in the price of her products. And as always, I'm here to help you um, in any way that I can, batting or not. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Um, 
and have a fabulous week. So thank you. Yes, and thank you very much, Jen, for having me. And if again, if anybody needs help, feel free to reach out. You can also visit our website where you'll find information on every single product, a lot of information I shared today. Um, and I did want to mention for anybody who's not familiar, Jen has an awesome store. I placed an order today. Yes, you did. I didn't get a chance to thank you for that. So. <laughs> I, I went out there and I was like, oh my gosh, it's like a candy store. So if any of you are into like embroidery or you like the Sue Fargo things or you like really neat fabrics, Jen has an awesome collection. And I hope you'll, uh, you know, pay her back by, uh, by visiting her store thank when you, you need things. <laughs> So thank you, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye now. Goodbye.